breadcrumbing is a manipulation that is used to keep you interested. Basically, you're being strung along. When someone is breadcrumbing you, in particular when a narcissist is breadcrumbing you, they are giving you just enough to keep you invested, to keep you interested, and to keep you as a source of supply in their life. They're doing it, it's sort of like lazy love bombing, right? It's just enough, just bits. So let's talk about what is breadcrumbing, get some examples of breadcrumbing, and just go from there. So um, they give you enough of themselves to keep you on the hook, to keep you looking for more, to keep you invested in the relationship. And so it's an, and it's an excuse for not having to give real affection and attention and show real interest. It's it's a surface artificial sort of stringing you along to keep you on the hook, to keep you invested and interested in them and in giving them the supply that they want from you. Let's talk about some examples of breadcrumbing. It could be frequent texts or phone calls or communications with no real plans to set anything up. So this like, say you are in the dating world or have a new friend or even a family member and they text you a lot and say, yeah, we should get together. Yeah, we should do this. Oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. But they give you lots of attention in the text, but there's no real actual plan to do anything. And then if you do set up a plan, they postpone it and don't do anything with you. So what does that do is it creates scarcity. It creates the feeling of them being more important, them having an important life that you want to be part of. We don't tend to often see it when we're in the middle of this, especially if they're doing this later on, like say you're in a relationship with a narcissist and they're, you're not in a living situation, you're in a, in a separate housing situation. And, um, excuse me, um, and they do this to you or they text you all the time, set up a date, set up a weekend, set up this and then cancel on you or text you all the time and make it sound like they really miss you and want to see you and never try to see you. Or if you ask them to do something, they go, yeah, we should do that. And they don't actually follow through. It sets up scarcity. It gets, it sets it up so that we are on the, on the chase for more of that affection. Another example could comments on your social media but they don't actually talk to you in real life. You'll see that a lot with narcissistic friends and narcissistic relatives, right? They want to look as if they are invested and involved in your life, but they're not. And it feels really weird. Okay. Um, you could be with a narcissist and they could be flirting with you and then drop you. I have heard of them giving elaborate gifts and then disappearing. It's not even elaborate gifts, just gifts. And it basically, it's anything that's baiting you towards what could come next. And then there's no next. That's just it. And it's it leaves you feeling like, why did I have that expectation? What's wrong with me? When in fact, you were led that way because they are deliberately setting things up to either look good, to look a certain way, to have to, to filter everything back to them and how they appear. Um, okay, so you basically it's like an, emo an emotional roller coaster. You're getting mixed signals of hot and cold, often on and off. It's intermittent, so it does come into play with intermittent reinforcement here, which we've talked about a while ago. Um, we know that intermittent reinforcement will cause cognitive dissonance. It will lend to the trauma bonding. So this all plays in together. A lot of times, people say, "Well, they never love bombed. They never love bombed." I hear that a lot. They never love bombed. But did they breadcrumb? And often, yeah, when you hear these examples, yeah, they did do those things. It's sort of a more aloof or passive aggressive way of love bombing. Um, it is similar to gaslighting in that it is a, manipulati a manipulation technique, right? It is a manipulative tactic, a manipulative behavior, but it is different. So with this, you're leading someone on. It's basically that is it. You are stringing someone along. With gaslighting, the person is trying to change the other person's view of reality. So it's it's a different type of manipulation. They kind of go hand in hand and they often both tend to happen. Okay, another thing, there may be a lot of surface conversations without any real depth. And when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you will notice that any relationship, any conversation rather, that has any depth tends to be about them or something that interests them about 
you, but not really about you, if that makes sense, or not even about if it's a, it's like, say it's a topic of interest, a political topic or a social topic or whatever that they're really into. If they're really into it, they can go deep into the thing because that's their interest. Right. But for the most part, that's where the depth ends. If it's a conversation about depth in relationship, it won't be there most of the time. Um, there are some, they get into it. The types that are really into psychology like to get into it. So this isn't everyone, <laughs> but, but you'll, this is kind of um, a pattern you might see. Oh, this is a good one. So if you're not in a um, living situation with them, or if you are and they're out a lot, late night calls, calls at odd hours, calls when they know it would be inconvenient for most people. Basically, it's an intrusion of your time, but because they don't call any other time, it feels like you finally get a piece of them, of their finally giving you something. You see, they wait and wait and wait, they hold it off and then they give you these calls in the middle of the night, late at night, odd hours. When they know you're with your kids on a weekend, when they know whatever it is, that's when they reach out for your attention. They reach out for your attention when they feel your attention would be somewhere else. It, it throws you off. It makes you feel like you're like, oh, they really wanted to talk to me this late. No, they just waited till that late to talk to you. All right. Um, it's intermittent replies to messages or conversations. So they pick and choose what they're going to reply to. They string you along with breadcrumbing by agreeing to things or talking about things that, that you have said are important in a surface way. And then they avoid anything that is a real conversation about things that need change. That goes without saying with them, right? A lot of the message you will messages you will receive if you are not in a day to day relationship with them, if you are in a more of a dating or um, less of a day in day out relationship, are uh, messages for hookups or messages for something they need. So, yeah, but they will be full of a love bombing air make you feel important, make you feel special for the moment. And then they disappear or then they get what they want and go away. Right. Okay. They play the victim. Okay. So when they're playing the victim, when a narcissist is playing the victim and they are breadcrumbing you, they may send you passive aggressive texts, calls, remarks, comments, whatever it is, short little bits of passive aggressive things. They might sigh, or they might send you a picture of themselves looking sad, or they might um, say a few words that makes you think they really are in need. Just enough to get you to bite, to get you to take the bait and ask what's wrong and talk about the problem and talk about the issues. So what does that give them? It gives them supply and it gives them your focus right back on them. You're being hoovered by a narcissist when they're sucking you back in. Breadcrumbing's big. They do this because they want to look like they're not all in so that there is something for you to chase after, something for you to need, something for you to want from them. Basically, all of this sets you up for emotional dependence. It sets you up so that you are always looking for signs of love and approval because it is intermittent. It comes and goes. It's hot and cold. It's unpredictable. Okay. Um, you surrender when you're in a relationship or involved with narcissistic, narcissistic people or toxic people. You end up surrendering your power, your will, your agency as you are sitting there waiting for their, their replies, waiting for their phone calls, waiting for their love, waiting for their attention, their approval, their affection. And it's like this downward spiral of your own self-esteem that happens at that point. So while the breadcrumbing is like chasing little bits of affection, at the same time, it's taking you down the rabbit hole of your own feeling terrible about yourself and having not good feelings about yourself. It feels lonely, empty, and frustrating. It's all kinds of, all kinds of yuck, okay? One of the things that is the hook and like why we why we keep going with the breadcrumbing is because of the intermittent nature of it the the coming and going the not knowing when it's going to happen it gives you just enough attention just bits of attention just enough focus just enough just a glimmer 
And what that does is it opens your eyes, your thoughts, your mind, and your heart to the potential of what could be. It gets you to chase that potential and to need more. It is so effective. It is so effective in getting people to want more from someone. That, I mean, breadcrumbing, if you if you go research breadcrumbing, you're not going to see narcissists next to it most of the time. It is something a lot of people do. Insecure, if you're feeling insecure, if you're feeling down on yourself, if you're feeling like... Um, if you're immature, if you are like immature, meaning don't have a lot of life experience and know how to communicate and have boundaries and, you know, like you're, you're learning, right? And it spans the line all the way to toxic people. It's a passive aggressive way of trying to get your needs met um, for some people. For other people, it's a passive aggressive way of seeking supply, narcissist, of keeping you on the hook. 